Welcome to Made in Alberta. We're learning how to build a passive solar house. The reason it's called passive is that it normally doesn't use any form of energy uh, to move the uh, heat around the house. It doesn't use fans, it doesn't use pumps or anything like that. Passive solar houses capture the sun's heat through windows, retain heat with insulation and air sealing, and moderate the inside temperature with thermal mass. My name's Cheryl Atchison and uh, I live in a passive solar house and I was actually involved in all aspects of the building of the house. Cheryl wanted an open plan so she could visit with her dinner guests. But there are hidden benefits. It gives a spacious feel to the compact living space and allows heat and light to passively move through the structure. I did a lot of looking at uh, design magazines and all that kind of stuff, trying to figure out what it was that I wanted so that when we went to the designer, I could say to him, I want this general layout, I want rooms at least this size, and so on. One of the first things you want to do when you're designing that house is maximize the glass on the south side of the house, up to a certain level, of course, because you don't want to overheat the house. And then, at the same time, you want to minimize the north glass on your house because you're getting no solar gain from the north glass. It's only heat loss going on back there. And then your east and west glass, you also want to Im uh, limit to some extent as well. So once you have your passive solar heat inside the house, you want to keep it there. A typical house has a lot of air moving through it, which makes it very expensive to heat, of course. So part of a sun-tempered house or a passive solar house would be to caulk it well, weather strip it well. The Atchison's installed an air-to-air -air heat exchanger for ventilation because the house is so tightly sealed. They also increased the insulation slightly over a typical 1983 house. It's R20, if I remember correctly, in the walls, R40 in the ceiling, R10 under the basement floor. That's very important if you're heating the floor in particular, and even if you're not, you don't want to heat the rest of the earth, you want to heat your house. The magic of thermal mass is that it absorbs the sun's heat and cools the house by day. Then it re-radiates that heat into the house when the sun goes down at night. That a lot of what we're talking about here, especially with the sun-tempered design, really comes down to common sense and simplicity in design. We're talking about uh, regaining our sense of what's uh, sensible. The Atchison's paid about 5% more to build a house that uses half the natural gas of a typical Edmonton house. But it's not just about the money. We're seriously more comfortable than we were in our other house. That's included in that 5%. You do feel better if you're at all concerned about the environment and thinking that you're consuming less than you might have been if you'd built a more conventional house, but you haven't, you haven't given up anything to do that. Would you like to learn more about the Atchison House? Let us know. See you next time for more Made in Alberta New Energy Stories. <laughs>